As we start here, I'd like to share some teachings from the Bhagavad Gita. This is a, just a wonderful, wonderful text if, you've, if you haven't gotten a chance to read it. It really gives you a lot of instructions for what yoga is. And yoga in this context, in the context of the Bhagavad Gita, is much more than simply uh, doing physical exercises. So I highly recommend it. I, I, people in devotees in India read the whole thing in, in a day or as a practice. And this one is, looks longer. It's, it's about uh, 300 pages, but that's because there's commentary in it. And the actual size of it is much shorter. So it's doable. You can actually read the whole thing in a fairly short period of time if you wanted to. And, but beyond that, you could even just take one sentence of it and, and think about it. You don't need to have an awful lot of information here because it's just so packed. Basically, it's about a conversation between, between a, a human being and God as that human being understood God or understands God. And the name of God in the Hindu tradition, one of the many names of God is Krishna. And so this is, th these are instructions that God is giving to human beings. And you can use it, you know, the, the word Krishna is, is one name you could use, but if you have a, a particular way of addressing the, the divine, you could substitute that in for, for Krishna. It doesn't necessarily need to be that name. So Krishna says, he says, apart from me, there is nothing whatsoever. Oh, wonderful. We can think about that for the next 45 minutes, if you like. Apart from me, there is nothing whatsoever. Prior to coming to the yoga class, I was washing the dishes and I thought, I don't feel connected to these dishes. Let me go read a section from the Bhagavad Gita and see if I get any inspiration. And I read that line and I thought, of course, the dishes are also where, where the divine is. It's not some, some special place uh, outside the dishes, outside of our life. And yet we need, we need to spend some time remembering that so that when we return to our, our everyday ordinary life, we can see the, the sacred in the ordinary. That's really what Zen is about, noticing that in the ordinary everyday life is where the divine is, or in, in Zen terms, we might say that's where the Buddha is. He continues the next sentence, the entire creation is strung on me like a necklace of precious gems. It's a little bit more complex, but I'd just like you to think about this question or think about this as a question. What does it mean? What does it mean to say, apart from me, and you can substitute any name you want to put in there, that me, that's the big me, or you might think of it as God or, or so, however you understand that which is greater than all of that we see around us. Apart from me, there is nothing whatsoever. The entire creation is strung on me like a necklace of precious gems. So what does that mean? What could that mean for us right here and, and right now? Apart from me, there is nothing whatsoever. There's a, there's a story, there's a, a Buddhist story about a monkey, the monkey king. The monkey king does all kinds of mischievous things and he tries to jump out of the hand of the Buddha. He's, he's sitting in the hand of the Buddha. The monkey king can jump for miles and miles, thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles he can jump. And when he, and so he decided he's gonna jump off of the Buddha's hand and go someplace else. And he does this jump and flipping through the air a million times and then he lands and he went from he went from the, the palm of the Buddha's hand to just uh, around the thumb. He didn't move very far, even though he did all that jumping. That's another way of talking about this. 
No? Wherever we are, that's, that's where the divine is, wherever we happen to be. So on that, on that note, let's just take a moment to, to bring awareness to our, our body, to soften wherever there might be tension there, to know, to know that we are embraced by, by love, however you may imagine that embrace. The, fair, the very fact that we're here and alive means that we're loved if not by a particular person, by, by the universe. What, what is it that enables us to sit upright, to breathe, to see? So coming from the place of this unconditional love, that's where we start our practice. And the physical yoga postures can help to open us up to that even more, even more deeply. So let's begin by rocking a little bit side to or forward and backward. Just rocking your, rocking your body. Just rocking our body side to side a little bit then, forward and backward, side to side. And then making some circles, circling your, your trunk around your legs. in either direction. And then coming back to center and lengthening your spine upwards, just kind of pressing your, pressing your sternum forward, lifting your chin up, and then rounding your back, tucking your chin. Inhaling to lift your sternum and chin Exhaling to round your back and tuck your chin. And just continue to move like that. Exhaling, rounding your back. Inhaling, lifting your chin. And then when you're ready, come on back to center. Circling the shoulders. If you'd like, you could bring your hands to your shoulders and circle them that way. Either direction, either direction is fine. And then resting. And then moving into our, our chin, our, our neck, and kind of making like a U shape with your, with your chin. Lifting to one side, down, and lifting to the other side. It's making a U, like a U shape movement with your chin. And feeling all the muscles in the back of your neck. See how that feels? And then if you like to complete it, make a, a big circle, like a, a full circle, you can bring your chin all the way up and around. Okay, and then back to center. Feel free to stretch your legs out and come on to all fours, coming on to hands and knees. My hands just under underneath my shoulders and my knees just underneath my hips. And just 
Beginning to round the back, lowering the chin, rounding the back, and then lifting the chin and drawing the abdomen down. As you move through this, as you move through the space, as you move here, if there's some place here where you feel a sense of opening, spaciousness, then you're welcome to stay there longer if you'd like. If you feel a sense of openness or ease in one spot, you can stay there for a longer time rather than continuing to kind of automatically move from chin up to chin, chin down. We'll just do that maybe another 10 seconds or so. Feel free to circle your tailbone around if you like during this time. Circle your tailbone. Okay, and maybe uh, even bringing your hips to towards one side and then towards the other side. It's kind of bringing your hips to one side, maybe down a little bit and then back up and down to the other side if you want. And then from here, we can move into a child's pose where you sit back on your, on your heels. Consider how much space you want to have between your knees. Maybe having your knees together, maybe having them wider apart. As you fold forward, you'll be able to have a better sense of what feels right for your body. So I'm just sliding my hands up towards the top of the mat as I lower my forehead down. Maybe, maybe walking your fingertips forward towards the top of your mat. And then coming into a downward dog. So for this one, feel free to curl your toes. Curl your toes under your feet, really pressing your palms down. Bring some engagement in your shoulders as you lift your knees, as well as engaging your core. So we're engaging our shoulders and our core as we lift our knees up. And then if you'd like, walk your feet in place at your own pace. Noticing your physical body here. Maybe taking in some deeper breaths if you want. Let your body speak to you, or another way to say it is listen to the muscles in your back and in your legs to help guide you into downward dog. If there's any sharp pains, that's generally a sign that we're probably should back off of what we're trying to do a little bit. I'm not always so good at doing that myself, but that's where injury takes place. So we just want to be mindful not to cause ourselves harm in these poses. They're not intended to push us like uh, an Olympic athlete, but to be, help us become aware of what we've already got. Okay, I'm going to stay here another few seconds. And by the way, if there's any, if you have any need to stop at any point, feel free to. You can always lie down in this, in this class. You can always come onto your back and just rest. Okay, and then when you're ready, begin to walk your feet towards your hands. Again, at your own pace. And when your feet come towards the front of your mat, 
you're welcome to bend your knees a bit. Just kind of let your head hang. Maybe shake your head a little bit. Rounding your back and then rolling up at your own pace. So there's no hurry here to come into standing. Really, the idea here is to bring mindfulness into our, our, our physical body. And as you come to standing, lengthening, lengthening your back up. Lengthening the spine upwards towards heaven, like an antenna almost, so you can receive messages from the, from the universe, we connect ourselves to the wider universe around us, and we use the full potential of our spine where we're able to receive the communicate the messages that we need from the universe to help us adapt to our situations. So let's just begin by bringing, lengthening our arms up over our head, Kind of locking, locking our thumbs. Just reaching my arms up over my head, locking my thumbs. So reaching up. And maybe taking one wrist and just pulling it a little bit to the to one side. Feel that pull, that side of your body. You might feel some pull, like pulling there. Maybe breathing in a little deeper in that part of your body. And then back to center. And switching wrists, just pulling to the other side. Breathe. A couple breaths, two or three breaths maybe. And then back to center. Lengthening up again. Can kind of release the hands. Reaching up. Maybe a little back bend here by... You know, just kind of squeezing your, your low back, squeezing your core, squeezing your legs, maybe making a little bit of space between your, between your feet as you bend back. You can hold your back here as you bend. Just you know, being really careful not to hurt your low back. So it's, it's helpful to kind of draw your pelvis forward. And maybe, you know, you could keep your hands here or if you want to reach them out over your head. And then palms in front of your heart. Find your breath for a moment. Breathe. Okay, let's begin our first sun salutation. Extending the arms forward, lock the thumbs, reach up overhead, little back bend here again. And then forward fold. In this forward fold, you're you could, there's a couple ways to do a forward fold. Because I'm tall, I always have to watch my back, but one way to do this is just placing your hands on your knees, just lengthening out your back so that you feel a little stretch in the back of your legs. Another way to do this, if you want, is to um, catch, your, catch the backs of your legs with your hands and kind of draw your head towards your knees. Okay, when you're ready, bring your hands down on either side of your feet, stepping your left foot back as far as it'll go. Maybe lowering your left knee down, feeling the hips open up here. You might feel some opening in your hips, maybe your thighs. And then stepping the right foot back for downward dog. You can adjust your feet, maybe bringing them closer to your hands, drawing your heels downwards. See if you can find some ease here in your body as you're in this inversion. Engage your shoulders here. Pressing the palms and the fingers into the mat. And then lowering your knees down. You could either come right onto your elbows, sliding forward, or stay on your hands and just kind of like almost like a, a mini push-up, lowering all the way down. Exhale fully, rest your back. On the inhale, lift up head, neck, shoulders. It doesn't have to be like an upward dog. It could be a, a smaller movement here. 
maybe even releasing your hands. And three, two, one, hands back under the shoulders, pressing up and back. And then left foot forward between the hands, lowering the right knee down. And softening the abdomen, softening the face, lengthening the, the neck, drawing the shoulders away from the ears. And then stepping the right foot forward, right foot forward, feel it back rounding here, bending the knees, right, rolling up to standing, reaching arms up overhead. Little back bend and palms together in front of the heart. All right, let's try number two. We'll go a little bit faster. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale the right foot back. Exhale the left foot back. Lower down knees, chest and chin. Lower all the way down, hands under the shoulders, legs together. Inhale up, like a little cobra or an upper dog if you want. And then exhale back to downward dog. Engage your core as you make that transition, smooth transition. Okay, and then stepping the right foot forward. And stepping the left foot forward. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, the left foot back. Exhale, the right back. Lower down knees, chest, and chin. Inhale to Cobra or Upward Dog. Exhale to Downward Dog. Engage your core as you make this transition. Inhale the left foot forward. Exhale the right foot forward. Inhale the arms up. Exhale palms together and in front of the heart. And rest in Mountain. Let's see if you notice any changes in your body. All right, let's try um, separating the feet a little bit and um, making one foot pointing towards the front of your mat, wherever the front is. It's kind of pointing one foot forward. We'll come into triangle. So the opposite foot, your back foot is uh, kind of at an angle, kind of like a 45 degree angle. A little bend in your, in your front knee. Arms reaching out over the legs and then reaching, just kind of reaching your front arm forward over your front leg. See if you can keep the arms, arms kind of a straight line between the hands as you come into triangle. You could have your hand towards the ceiling or if you wish to bring it over your head towards the wall. And holding for a count of one, I'm sorry, three, two, one. Okay, and lower that hand. Slowly make your way up, take your time here, turning the front foot in and the back foot out. Now we're going to the other side. Arms out, over the legs reaching, and then lowering. So the arms are moving like a, as a piece, as one piece, as though there was a rod tied to each of your wrists, straight across. 
But then if you want, you could bring the hand over the head if that, if that makes sense for you at this time, if it makes sense for your body at this time. Be mindful of that front knee. You could bend it here too. And where you place your hand, it could be at your ankle or your foot, maybe even your knee. You know, so if you want to come up and check it out, just, maybe this is a better place for you. Okay, three, two, one. And let's rise back up. Bring your feet together, pause here. Okay, so um, we'll do some back strengthening poses next. First one is warrior three. So start out with um, bringing the right foot forward, left foot back, stretching the arms out at your sides, back toes come, uh, uh, right to the tips of the toes, lengthening the spine up, lift your back toes up. If you want to, you can hold on to the wall or a chair. If you have a chair there, hold on to the chair. And then kind of tipping your head forward, you decide how far forward to tip and how high to lift your back leg. You could have your hands here stretched out like airplane wings, or if you want to try reaching them forward a little bit. Feel it, the muscles in your back engaging. And holding for five, four. You may want to bend your standing leg, your standing knee. Three, two, one. Okay, let's come out of that pose. Rest. All right, let's try, let's try the other side. So left foot forward, right foot back. Again, really listening to your own body. Your body is constantly giving you signals and messages and we want to honor them. Coming into the pose, there is no perfect pose here. It's really what your body is feeling into at the moment. We're not trying to, it's not an endurance contest, but a way of exploring our own bodies. It's not about getting into a posture as much as it is feeling your body and holding for five, four, three, two, one, and coming out with ease. That coming out of this pose with ease helps to maintain the prana, the life force that's in, it, in us. So we're gonna come out with a sense of, of control of our own uh, legs and arms. If we lose balance doing a, a balancing pose like that, it's okay. See if you can maybe um, reduce the loss of control. Okay, let's try another balancing pose. This one is tree. And bring one foot up to your, your thigh, to your calf, your ankle. Find a comfortable spot for your foot to be. It doesn't have to be up by your hip. If you want it to be, it can. And then maybe pushing your knee back a little bit if you have it where you can reach it. It's kind of lengthening the spine upwards. Little micro bend in your standing leg. And then arms can be like the branches of a tree. They can be in various places. Feel free to explore here, different places, placements for your arms. You could even try closing your eyes if you want to, see how that feels. And holding for five, four, 
three, two, one. Okay, again, really being careful to maintain the, the prana by coming out of these poses with some degree of control, starting with our arms, lowering down, and releasing, releasing the foot slowly, and back down. So you can get a sense of your, your vitality. Okay, then let's try the other side. Let's try the other foot. And, and, and have no, there's no shame in using a wall or using a chair to help you balance, especially if you're feeling really shaky. And three, two, one. All right, let's start with the arms. And then the foot. And come into mountain pose. All right, so we'll do some um, um, leg strengthening poses. The first one is chair. So sitting back as though you're going to sit down on a chair. You decide how much you'd like to bend your knees here and where to place your hands. Just as in tree, you could have your hands in different locations. One place is on your knees. A second option is straight out in front. A third option is overhead. And just hold that. We'll hold that for about 20 seconds. A lot of times uh, you may experience some kind of internal heat being generated in this pose. And uh, in yoga, that's called tapas. And it helps to burn away afflictions. Physically, on the physical level, we're burning away fat and toxins in your physical body. On the mental, spiritual level, we're burning away um, afflictions like greed, hatred, and delusion. Holding another five, four, three, two, one, and come back to standing. Just take a moment, see how your legs are feeling with that. Breathe. All right, let's try it. Uh, a couple more back strengthening poses and then we'll, we'll try some lunges. So go ahead and come down onto your abdomen when you're ready. Just resting your whole, your whole body as you're on the floor here. You can have your arms at your side if you like, turning your head to one side, just letting everything soften. You can stay here for as long as you want. If you want to stay here for the rest of the class, that's fine. All right, when you're ready, let's bring the hands underneath the shoulders, the chin or forehead to the mat, elbows close to the body, feet together. On the inhale, lift up the head. You want to straighten your arms, that's up to you. It's mainly focusing on the low back, engaging the muscles in the low back. And holding for five, four, three, two, 
one. Okay, let's lower down, bringing the chin to the mat now, bringing the hands to the sides, or you could bring your elbows underneath your abdomen for the locust pose. Locust, you bring up, bring up one leg, the half locust, so you like to bring one leg up and hold. Disengage the ankle muscles. Disengage the muscles of the leg that's not up. And three, two, one, lower down with control. And lift the other leg up and hold. Just hold it for about 15 seconds. And three, two, one, and lower with control. Let's do both legs together now. Ready? Take a breath in. Hold it, lift up both legs, and release the breath, hold, four, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Release the arms, turn the head to one side, and rest. Okay, uh, one more, well, maybe a couple more back, uh, back strengthening poses we'll try. So I like to try a uh, bow pose, and we'll do that starting out on our side. So you turn on to one side, reach back behind you for your, for your top leg, and push your foot into your hand. You can stay here, or Roll over onto your abdomen and onto your opposite side, grab the other foot. And again, now you're pushing both feet into your hands, maybe lifting your chin up. You can stay here or roll onto your abdomen and do it from here. So I just want you to play around a little bit, explore this movement. For about the next 30 seconds or so, you can come out of the pose when you need a rest and roll to one side or roll to the other side, just engaging your, your ankles and bending your back just in a way that feels comfortable for your back, for your body. Remember, we're looking for a place of ease in the body. Sometimes we don't feel it. Sometimes we do. Just keep exploring around. Little small movements of our legs can make a world of difference. Maybe bringing your feet closer together. Five, four, three, Two, one, and release. Just resting your, well, resting your head, resting your legs. Feel free to stay here as long as you want. We're just con consciously, consciously resting the muscles in our back and legs, as well as our face and arms. Okay. And then when you're ready, come on up to our hands and knees and sit back into, into child's pose to give your back a little stretch. Drawing your forehead down towards the mat.
Okay, and then curling your toes under, lifting your knees up to downward dog. All right, and then uh, just kind of walk our feet forward, walk our hands backward, and come into standing. So we've been doing some back bends. Now we're going to transition to the twisting phase of the class. So we'll try a reverse triangle. So for this one, step your right foot forward, left foot back. And if you need a chair, that's totally fine. You can put a chair next to your, next to your front leg and just place your hand on the chair. Or if you have a block or a cushion you want to use, put it on the floor and place your hand on the floor. All right, so let's start just by, first of all, decide how much space you want to have between your feet. Maybe bringing your legs a little closer together. A little micro bend in your right knee. Arms out to the sides as you tip your head forward. And the back of your right leg is going to really be letting you know, maybe letting you know how far forward to, to bend here. And that's where a... a uh, a block or a chair might come in handy. So only going forward, uh, as far forward as you feel comfortable. And then uh, you could stay here or release your arm up towards the ceiling. My right arm's going up towards the ceiling. You can feel a little twist in your torso, maybe a stretch in the right hip or the right glute. See if you can lengthen your spine, draw your shoulders away from your ears. So we're really keep continuing to engage our spine here as we move into this twist. Okay, let's bring that right arm down if it isn't already and walk the hands to the center. I'm gonna draw my right knee, my, my right foot in, walking my hands to the center and then um, left foot coming out and walking my hands towards my left foot. Again, you can use your chair here. You know, feel free to move your chair to the left foot. And then maybe reaching your left arm up. So you're just starting that twist from, from the, that forward bend. And feel free to bend your left knee as much as you want to here. You know, it could be a generous bend here as you lift your left arm up and then maybe straightening your, your knee. As you're in the, in the form, you could explore straightening that knee. And holding for five, four, three, two, one. Let's lower that leg down. Just kind of bring your hand to your knee and then just in your own time, begin to shift to standing. Walking your feet together, softening your back, rest. Okay, let's have a seat. It's core engagement. Try out boat pose. So starting with the knees raised, hands to the knees, leaning back a little bit. You could stay here. If you feel some engagement with your, with your core, stay here or maybe release your hands. Maybe reach up your feet and breathe. And hold for 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, begin to lower your legs down, reach the head up, lift the head up to reach the arms overhead. I'm gonna fold over both legs together. So lengthening the spine up. If you have a cushion or something to sit on a block, this can help with these forward folds. Having the hips raised can help you to get your um, low back 
prevent your low back from rounding too soon here. So we're internally rotating our legs, lengthening the spine up, and then folding forward over both legs, keeping your, keeping your back long here, reaching forward as you lower your hands to your toes or your ankles, or simply bring them onto the floor, rounding your back now. And let's stay here for about 30 seconds. Just tucking the chin a little bit. See if you can rest into the pose. Let the pose do you rather than you do the pose. And three, two, one. All right, let's make our way back to seated. Crisscross your, your ankles if you like, or sit in a comfortable cross legged position. For yoga mudra, the yogic seal, this we're beginning to wind down the class. The yogic seal helps us to. Retrieve the benefits of all of the asanas we've done so far. So let's uh, bring the hands behind the back, take hold of the right wrist with the left hand, and close the eyes, just kind of tuck the chin, begin to round the back, draw the forehead towards the mat. If, it, uh, if your head can go all the way down, just bring it all the way down to the mat. Just focus here is on the breath. And then slowly, slowly winding back up, making this the slowest movement of the class. Feeling each vertebrae in your back as you lengthen up, releasing your hands. Let them rest on your knees or in your lap. Lengthening the spine up. You could keep your eyes closed here if you'd like. Noticing any changes, any shifts in your internal body, physical body. Feel free to stay here, or if you want to move into deep relaxation, you're welcome to lay down on your back. If you have lights on in your space, maybe close them, turn them off, close any uh, shades or anything like that. To begin to block out light. The deep relaxation helps us to absorb the benefits of our practice. You like to do a quick tightening and releasing of your muscles. Just squeeze your arms, squeeze your legs, lift up your head and arms, your legs together. Take a breath in, hold it, and release. Soften the muscles throughout your whole body, from head to toe, anywhere you feel tension or tightness. Any, any sense of well-being that you feel in your body, see if you can explore that a little bit more. Expand on it. Just kind of accepting, opening to it. Staying with it. Kind of almost indulging yourself in a sense of well being.
As you're ready, begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, rolling your legs and arms. You can stay longer on your back or when you're ready, roll to your left side. Making your way to a seated posture. Again, I invite you to reflect on these words from the Bhagavad Gita. Apart from me, there is nothing whatsoever. The entire creation is strung on me like a necklace of precious gems. Each of us is that precious gem. Let's just sit for a few moments. And closing dedication, may all beings be safe, may all beings be well, may all beings be happy.